What's up you guys, it's Steve here and take a look at this. By the way, talk of inflation. The overwhelming consensus is gonna pop up a little bit and then go back down. I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top domestic priority. Brian, how did the administration get that so wrong? Inflation, recession, stimulus checks, how did they get it all so wrong? This is your breaking news stimulus check update and stimulus package update. Now I'm gonna be sharing with you the actual video footage so you can see this interview with White House Economic Advisor Brian Deese. Let's take a look at the headlines coming out, you guys. Bash presses Biden's economic advisor. How did we get to this point? How have things unraveled so bad, you guys? Well, take a look at this response really quick here. U.S. economy is in a period of transition, White House Economic Advisor says. Despite high inflation, the U.S. is moving from the strongest economic recovery in modern history to what can be a period of more stable and resilient growth, Brian D. says. And I gotta know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you buying it? Because what we're hearing is the vast majority of Americans, they're not buying what Brian Deese is selling. They believe that things are in the pooper. Take a look at this, you guys. Most Americans say that things are going badly under a distracted and incompetent President Joe Biden. Wow. And I shared this with you in detail in my last video that right now his approval rating is going down pretty bad. And we're still hearing, though, take a look at this. I shared it with you. Representative Hakeem Jeffries says he's very confident that Democrats, they're going to retain the majority majority in these midterm elections, they are going to win. They're claiming victory. And again, if you missed that video, check it out right after this one. As he's saying that they are going to get on board, they're going to take aggressive actions, they're going to pass legislation and executive orders. And a lot of people are wondering, well, is there something he knows that he's not telling us? Are they planning to pass stimulus checks right before midterm elections? Well, we're hearing stimulus checks are the number one top provision with the most popularity amongst the American people and is the number one provision that helps fight poverty amongst all of them during this pandemic. So we will see, we've already had two different proposals recently released in the past two weeks, one in the House and one in the Senate, one for $600 and one for $1,000 to go out to everybody in the nation on a federal level. Now also, I shared with you in my last video, if you missed it, we're hearing this might be needed because we're not gonna be seeing two or three dollar gasoline even in the near future. Analysts are saying that gas prices are high and they are here to stay. Take a look at these headlines. Gas prices reach another record high of $4.60 a gallon after Biden claimed US is going through an incredible transition right now at the pump as the White House now plans to tap into emergency diesel reserves. So it looks like we're going through economic turmoil and upon the horizon, things are only looking worse. And a lot of people are wondering, how is Congress gonna be addressing all of this, all of this economic issues that we're currently experiencing, how are they going to be fighting inflation and at the same time helping the American people with maybe stimulus checks or direct assistance to get through this pandemic? Well, we're hearing that right now Congress is ramping up. They're trying to get things done as we're approaching midterm elections. We're hearing a whole lot more about checks and provisions and legislation and we're going to be seeing, I'll be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel as things are picking up and we'll see how they respond. Now, also wanted to mention, if you're interested, consider joining the second channel, Steve Ram Finance, right now at 8.5% year over year inflation, not doing anything, having your money sitting, you are losing tons of purchasing power just by default, by not doing anything. You have got to invest. So I'm here to try to help out my viewing community. If you're interested, I'll pin a comment down below, click the link, go subscribe. Turn on notifications to my second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about investing in real estate, stocks, crypto, starting businesses. I hope that that's a blessing to you. Also, if you appreciate the updates here on this channel, the economic updates on stimulus, Congress, everything going on, don't forget to take a quick second to smash that like button. Helps me out a ton with the algorithm. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments, share this out. If you want to stay up to date, totally free, why not come join the Ram Fam? All you got to do is hit the subscribe button. Turn Turn on that notification bell. And if you got any specific questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at SteveRam3. But with that being said, you guys, let's dive into this video footage and let me know your opinion. Do you agree with White House Economic Advisor Brian Deese or do you not? Let's go ahead and take a look. To discuss all of this is the president's top economic advisor, the director of the National Economic Council, Brian Deese. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Let's start with the S&P 500 dipping into bear market territory on Friday. It did rebound slightly. Uh, the Dow just experienced its longest losing streak in nearly a century. So yes or no, 
Is the U.S. falling into a recession? Well, there are always risks, but here's where I think we are. Our economy is in a transition from what has been the strongest recovery in modern American history to what can be a period of more stable and resilient growth that works better for families. There's no doubt we face serious global challenges right now, inflation uh, first and foremost among them, and it's hitting families hard. But there's also no doubt that the United States is in a better position than any other major country around the world to address inflation without giving up all the economic gains that we've had. And that's because of the strength of our recovery. We have the strongest job market. We have businesses investing. We have Americans actually increasing their savings and paying down. So their given debt. all of that, are you confident that the U.S. can avoid a recession? We, in this transition, the United States is in a better place uh, than any other country because of those strengths. If you think about where we have come from, we have navigated through Delta and Omicron. We've navigated through the gyrations coming from Putin's war in Ukraine. And still, the American consumer, the American business has been resilient through this period. And so if we keep our focus on bringing inflation yeah. down in a way that actually helps families... But you're not saying no. We, look, there are always risks, but we feel very good about where the United States is, particularly when you look on the global landscape. Okay, Let, let's talk about inflation. It is still near the highest levels in four decades. I want to play what President Biden said about this issue almost a year ago compared to what he's saying now. By the way, talk of inflation, the overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top domestic priority. Brian, how did the administration get that so wrong? Look, a lot of things have changed over the course of the last year, and we've dealt with a lot of unexpected challenges. As I mentioned, the Delta wave of COVID, Omicron on top of that, and more recently, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, which has sent gyrations through global energy markets. What's most important for the American people to understand right now is they have a president who is making clear, as you just played, that inflation is his top economic priority, and that means a couple of things. First, we need to give the Fed the space and the independence to do its job, which is to get inflation under control. Second, we need to lower costs for families, make things more affordable for them during this economic transition. And third, we need to reduce the federal deficit. If we reduce the federal deficit, we'll help to reduce price pressures in the economy. We've made a lot of progress on that because of the president's policies, but we can do more. Well, let me ask you about two specific things that would get to the second point you made about lowering costs for consumers. Uh, number one, the federal gas tax. Would you implement a federal gas tax holiday, yes or no? Well, we're looking at every option. That's something that Congress would need to take up. When it comes would, to... Would, well, the president would have to, or not would have to, but if the administration wants it, he could announce that that's something he wants. Look, we're working to do. with congressional leaders on a range of different options, um, and the president is open to anything that could constructively move to help bring some relief at the pump. He has already Including taken that. historic action, to be clear. We're releasing a million barrels a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Countries around the world are doing the same because the president has led. That has helped to blunt the impact of uh, oil prices. So the gas tax holiday is very much on the table. Look, we're looking, we're okay. looking at okay. any option that could constructively move us. Let me ask you about another option, rolling back Trump's tariffs on China. Well, that's another thing that we're actively looking at. But it, that goes to a broader question of how we can make trade internationally work for American families and American consumers. The president's in Asia right now, as you mentioned, and tomorrow we'll be launching something called the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. This is designed to actually focus on those economic issues that would matter most for American families. Let me give you a really concrete example. Supply chains. This framework will help us build more resilient early warnings for supply chains. One of the reasons why prices have gone up so much is we've seen these supply chain disruptions that then mean that Americans have to pay more at the store or online. We can solve those types of issues. That's what the president will be talking about tomorrow. Let's talk about baby formula. Speaking of supply chain, 45% uh, of baby formula products nationwide were out of stock at some point last week. At least four babies in South Carolina have been hospitalized because of complications due to this shortage. So when will baby formula be available to Americans in the way that they need? Well, because of the actions that we're taking right now, we're going to see more formula coming off factory lines when? and more formula in stores starting 
uh, as early as, as this week. And when will, as you when will we get to normalcy? Well, as you, as you mentioned, there is a flight that left last night from Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany full of formula that will land in Indiana this morning, a specialty medical grade formula, the type that we most need in this market. Just in that plane flight alone, that will cover about 15% of the overall national volume that we need for that. More flights in train that will be coming in early this week, and we're going to keep ramping that up. Uh, until we get there. It's going to take a little bit of time for the Abbott, uh, the manufacturer, to bring its facility back online. What is that time, online. ballpark? Well, the CEO this morning uh, in the Washington Post said that they would have that operation back running in about a month. But we're not going to wait uh, that long. As, as I said, these planes that are landing right now are going to provide some incremental relief in the coming days. We're going to keep working on it over the course of weeks. I just have to ask people watching this are probably wondering, uh, as, as we all are, how do we get to the point where the United States of America has to airlift baby formula from another country in order to feed its children? Look, it's a reasonable question, and it's frustrating. I'm a parent, uh, and, and we look and we say, nothing could be more important than the health and the safety of our babies. We have to take safety very seriously. And part of what happened here was that we had a manufacturer that wasn't following the rules and that was making formula that, that had the risk of making babies sick. So we have to take action on that front. But there's a bigger uh, route to your question, which is how did we end up in a market where we have three companies that control 90% of the market? It goes back to this question of how we can bring more competition in our economy, have more providers of this formula so that no individual company has this much control over supply chains. And we're going to have to work on that. There's some big questions underneath that that we're going to have to get under. So there you have it. White House Economic Advisor Brian Deese on CNN, State of the Union. And let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with him? We heard him say that there is still a lot more to be done. Uh, and we're going to be seeing if they're going to be able to help out our economic situation. I will keep you up to date here on the channel. And I'll let you know what unfolds with federal level stimulus checks to everybody in the nation, child tax credits, more stimulus provisions, a revised Build Back Better, an assortment of different things, including state county and city checks all of this stuff unfolding with our economy i'll be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel and as always you guys thank you so much for joining me if you made it this far and you haven't already don't forget take a quick second smash that like button for the algorithm helps me out a ton thank you so much also if you want to stay up to date come join the ram fam totally free why not Hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. I'll keep you up to speed as things roll out. And if you've got any specific questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at SteveRam3 and consider joining the second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth and personal finance. We need to do something. We need to stay active to keep our money, our money's value up in an 8.5% inflation environment, you guys. So, man, with that being said, thank you so much for joining me once again, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.